Hello friends. If you're new to the channel, this video is part of a series of videos where we have been doing some easy knife customizations. Today we are finishing these Russell Green River knives that we've added a choil, a thumb ramp, and also installed these beautiful micarta handles. You can go to my playlist and find the video showing how all that was done. Today we are going to do a patina on the blades to protect and add character. But before we do, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. It's what keeps the channel going. Thank you. Enjoy the video. So what we're going to be doing to the blades is adding a finish like this. It's called a forced patina and it's created by mustard. It creates a forced corrosion that actually is going to protect the blades and uh, make them a little bit more durable and less prone to rusting. And it gives the blades a sort of antique weathered look that I think is uh, quite attractive myself. Now what we're going to be using is a mustard and we're going to apply that to the blades and the vinegar and the, uh, just the nature of the acid in the mustard is going to tarnish the blade and we're going to do that in a controlled situation but the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and get the blades clean and just use some uh, denatured alcohol and clean them really well you want to get all the fingerprints all the uh, the dirt and everything for where we machined them and we sanded them uh, any little remnants of glue all that needs to come off and we want to do around the handle too where the exposed tang is and get up in there deep where the handle meets the blade there might be some gunk left in there and uh, clean the edge edge the spine everything um, go over it several times if you need to and examine the blade good because any bit of glue or anything like that on there is gonna it's gonna mess up the pattern so now there are many ways you can force a patina when I was a kid we used to take our uh, little Uncle Henry's encased knives, they all came in carbon steel, and we'd stick them in a potato, uh, leave them in there overnight, and show them off to our friends and see who could get the darker patina. It was kind of like a uh, badge of honor to who had the darkest blade. Um, just something we did, you know, back in the day before we had uh, video games and all that. But uh, now most people use vinegar. Uh, most of the time they heat it up and there's other chemicals they use. And also if you check my playlist, I got a Spyderco Manix 2 Lightweight that has M4 steel. And I used salsa on that and coffee. Um, that worked pretty good. Uh, it's the only thing I could get to work on that M4 steel. But um, check it out. Here I'm just admiring my beautiful handles that I spent um, all day sanding on. I think they turned out beautiful. Uh, check out the video before this to see how we um, added the choil and, and shaped these handles. Uh, now they're going to look a little different once we oil them. Right now that's just wet from the alcohol. But um, alright, we got everything nice and clean. And now let's get ready to add our mustard. Now all I had was this Dijon mustard. Um, no, no, this is uh, this ain't right. Um, I need to run the grocery store. Let me go get the right stuff. Okay, this is the right stuff. Just good old yellow mustard. And um, yeah, I don't eat mustard on anything, so. If I got mustard in the refrigerator, it's usually for doing a patina. So, you know, cut the mustard, right? All right, so. Knives are all clean and dry. We wiped them down with alcohol. We made sure there's nothing on the blades. Now what I'm going to do is I like to just get, take these Q-tips and start dotting it on there. And what I'm trying to accomplish 
is I want to get the, the blade completely covered. I want no shiny spots on the blade, but I don't want a completely thick layer of mustard. I want some, um, how do I explain it? You know, like an English muffin, how you have the peaks in the valleys, you know, where the butter goes down in the valley, and then you have the peaks that stand up. Well, that's what I'm trying to create with the mustard. I'm trying to create these little peaks and valleys. So I got a, a spot with mustard on it, but I got a spot in between it. It's still not the shiny steel, but there's a very thin layer of mustard. And that's what's going to create the pattern. I, this is a pattern I came up with myself. I don't know if anybody else does it. If they don't, then let's just coin the phrase that this is the John Clark way or the John Clark pattern of uh, mustard patina. Um, this is the way I like to do it. I think it creates the most unique look. Um, it's I, you know kind of like a. a uh, a stone wash, river wash, something like that, you know, but in a patina. Um, and it's more random, you know, like a stone wash or something like that. And it's going to cover up scratches and, and any defects and anything else like that really good. You'll see. All right, we're going to do this uh, twice, and that's all it's going to take. So I'm going to completely cover the blade here. And here's a shot. That's how it should look. And see what I'm talking about. All right, so now time to do the back side of the blade. But uh, thank God for editing. You don't have to sit through the whole second side. I can fast forward it for you. So we got the second side covered. But one thing we don't want to forget to do is um, we got the spine of the blade. So we want to make sure we get that, you know, make sure you get that thin layer everywhere, but leave some uh, peaks and valleys here as well. That's what's going to give you the dark spots and the lighter spots, but we want a, a layer of oxidation on the complete blade, if, the, if that explains it. So let, let's go ahead and uh, go into that a little deeper while we want an oxidation on the blade, because there's going to be people that ask, why don't we leave the blade shiny? Well, these are high carbon steel blades. They're not stainless steel. They are going to rust if you don't take care of them and protect them. What we're doing here is we are adding a, another layer of protection that's going to make it easier to maintain these blades in the long run. Now these blades, because they are carbon steel, they get razor sharp and uh, they're a lot easier than stainless steel to uh, sharpen. So that's why we want these blades. That's why they're so valuable to us. I mean, these things will get like a razor real quick. All right, so about three hours later, here's what we got. You can see, you can, you can see the, the tint of rust. You can see a black film. Um, mustard's almost dried up, so we, we scrubbed everything. Hot water, little Dawn, get everything cleaned up and get them good and dry. You can see that uh, patina is starting to set in nicely. But we are going to do another application because it's not as dark as we want it yet. And there's still spots on that blade that are still shiny. See them? You can still see the, the shiny spots that we missed. So what we want to do now is break out that alcohol again. Get them completely clean. Fingerprints, whatever dishwashing detergent we put on there to get that first coat off. And then we're just going to run through it and do it all over again. And make sure that uh, if there's any shiny spots that we missed the first time that we, we get it on there. But the same thing. Nooks and crannies. Nooks and crannies. Don't forget the spine. That's usually where uh, where you miss spots. But don't think you can't come back and do a third or fourth application. You can do as many as you want and get it to where it gets to the uh, the look you're looking for. So, two, three more hours and uh, we cleaned everything off again. And 
let's get them good and dry let's make sure all that mustard is out from around the uh, all the little nooks and crannies completely off don't want any more corrosion going because now that's it we got them where we want them so now we want to preserve them so the first step is to get all that acid off of there and we're not going to use alcohol this time is we're going to use some of my all-time favorite I use this on my knives, my guns everything G96 gun treatment and you know what it's nice to use inside the house because it doesn't smell bad at all it smells like almonds but uh, soak that in there. I use it on my ARs, I use it on my Marlins, I use it on my Glocks Use on all my knives. It's a good product. Let's soak in for a minute. You can see what it's done to that micarta. That micarta sucked it in a little bit, and it's already darkened to a almost a honey already. He saw what color it was when I hit it with the alcohol. But um, look at that. It's it's really turned it to a beautiful shade of almost like a honey. Now you go using this knife. Uh, you you saw the the the, um, the large butcher knife up top there earlier. It, it's pretty dark, and and these handles are going to get darker. The more you use them, the older they get, because uh, they're going to absorb a little bit of uh, the grease and the oils from the food. But. Uh, that's what makes the uh, character makes them look good. And I think these are beautiful. They, I mean, if somebody picked this up, I mean, if they didn't know anything about materials and know that McCart is a newer material, they say, "Oh man, that knife's a hundred years old. You know, it's got that look." And that's what we we're after. I mean, anybody can go buy a Walmart shiny uh, gerber or a. Uh, you know, whatever the hell they sell down there. But these are nice. I made. I'm going to make me a little leather sheath for them. And, uh, you know what? I mean, these are perfect uh, barbecue knives. You know, you can carry these to have a cookout. You go on camping. I mean, look at that. You got a, a small butcher knife and a uh, small hunting knife. You know, that. That little butcher blade there is a perfect skinner, and, uh, and that's what I I made it for. Actually, uh, I want this one for uh, cutting up my pork butts, deboning them, and stuff like that. It's going to be perfect. It's going to be a little easier than using a large butcher knife. Um, it's a great skinner knife. Uh, that's what I shaped the handle a little bit different than the. Uh, the other knife. The other knife is, they actually call that a hunt fish. And I'm looking forward to using the, that's the pointed blade to the left. I'm looking forward to using that for sheephead. Uh, that's a local fish we have down here. Great eating. And mangrove snapper cleaning. Um, usually they get around two, three pounds. You know, they're, they're not a huge fish, so you don't need a huge knife. And, um, you know, just with the rib cage and everything, and the way you clean them, I'm looking forward to using that uh, that fish knife cleaning those. But this Skinner here, I mean, uh, I put that choyo in there. You can see the shape of the hand. You can see. Look at that um, pattern. Look at that patina. You know, this this was all done in a matter of six or seven hours. I I did the first one, ate some lunch, cleaned them off. Did a second mustard, took a couple hour nap in the afternoon because I'm getting older and that's what older people do is take naps. But um, look at that. I'm sorry, I'm just going to sit here and admire my, my knives. I made these, you know, I didn't make the blank. I bought a um, Russell Green River knife and uh, it was cheaper to buy the one with the cheap handles on so I just knocked it off. You can get those for... 11 12 bucks if you try to go to a knife shop and get the uh, just the blank you're gonna pay 20 plus shipping so it's gonna cost you $25 well 
you know, you're not paying $25 for a knife blank, you know, just a carbon steel knife blank. You're better off going to the flea markets and yard sales, trying to find an old hickory or something, you know, old knife that you can reshape and, you know, maybe the handle's falling off of it or something like that. Um, but web restaurant store has these all day long for 11, 12, 13 bucks. That's worth it. Buy a couple of them. The shipping doesn't kill you. There's my choil. Pretty proud of that. I got a little thumb ramp I added right there. It's hard to see, but you can definitely feel it. This little skinner just, uh, yeah, right there. It's just perfect. Perfect feel. And that's what's great about making your own knife. My, I have two XL hands, so sometimes knife don't fit my hands. I can't buy like a Puma or something like that. They just are too small. All the German knives are too small for my hands. But, um, you know, I just sat out there at this um, sander and just worked this handle until it had the perfect taper, the perfect little swell. Actually, I put a couple little indentions here to help with grip a little bit. I like it, and it um, it's just you know it's just shaped. It's smooth. There's no hot spots. Look at that patina, huh? Like a like I said, it's like a river wash. Look at that honey-colored micarta. This is just natural micarta. Actually, it was brown. But, uh, what they sold me, but it looks more natural, don't it? It's definitely not as dark as the uh, the old hickory one I made up there. That was brown micarta. You can still see the name, the the maker's mark on the blade and the model number through the patina. So can't do that on the old hickory. The old hickory it completely covered it up. So it must be a chemical label that they put on the blade. Here's my. Colby bolts and these handles now they're completely bedded in with uh, clear epoxy so when you wash them there's not going to get any soap or anything that's going to get between the blade and the handle and make it rust it's uh, completely sealed up there that's another advantage to replacing the handle the, the original wooden ones they're going to let go eventually because the brass rivets are going to let go and they're going to rust behind the handle and that's usually what happens and uh, you know, like I said, I've had that butcher knife. I made that a year ago, and I love it. And we still got this uh, Ontario knife chopper to do. We got to replace the handle on that and get it ready for the barbecue. All right, friends, that's going to wrap up this video on the patina. Don't forget to enter our knife giveaways. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. We got the uh, the Benchmade Hunt Series knife that we're giving away, plus the uh, Spyderco Bird. Thanks for watching. <laughs>